Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so journal number three is just about completed. We'll do a flip through and there's a couple little tidy up jobs in there and then she's done. So I've finished the little tassel on the side, a uh, little charm um, and some little bits and pieces that can be used to collage through the journal. Some uh, doily bits and some calico to put on tabs, a little bit of lace and some uh, eyelash yarn. So just a, a great spot to store bits that might be needed in the journal. Now let's have a look inside. I think I showed you I added some beads to the end of the um, ties. So that's completed. The little uh, ephemera folder is done. I decided to put it in the cover here because the pocket in the center it just bulked it up too much and I just felt that it fat, sat safely here under this belly band. So it ended up being pinned together with some paper that can be used in the journal. Another little paper clip with some bits on it. And then I just did a little bit of decorating on the front of the little booklet. And inside popped a heap of bits and pieces to be used, a little bit of fabric a little bit of ephemera and some labels and even a journal tag with the word journal on it. So ready to go. And then with it, I'm just putting some more of the French paper. And this is a digital print that has some lines on the inside. I think there's another one or two throughout. So it potentially could create another mini journal or be added in as flip out pages. So just a little something to play with and then a spare paper clip that can also be used. So that's the inside cover goodies. I'm really happy with the dried flowers. They still feel really good. They're sitting well. Yeah, really pleased I, I did change that. The tabs I added, these are the tabs we used in um, one of the other journals and I put three on. I just picked three spots so on the side, you can sort of see them stepping down. And then on each tab is a little pin with a little leaf charm as well. Okay, so there's plenty of room still to play in this journal. I've um, sort of just popped a few little decorative elements around, a few little bits and pieces in pockets. This is a napkin that I've um, decoupaged on this page just to put a pop of colour and I like using my glue stick because then you can feel the napkin and it feels like textured. I've got a couple spots further along that I want to put a bird. So I'll have a look at those spots and work out where we do it. And I'll show you my process. So just a little bit of decorating. I did um, was considering making that a pocket as well, but decided I, that I would. And it's just like a little tuck, but whether it gets found is another thing because, you know, a, piece, a bit of glue here and it'd be forever gone. But it is a little tuck spot in there as well. Some more ephemera added, just some bits and pieces. In the, um, there's an envelope there with some bits inside. Here is the second little decoupage bird I did with the napkin. Added a little bit of fabric and a label. I'll just bring that up to the camera, sort of using those three little elements. It's uh, come up really well, and that's on the front of that envelope. A few goodies in the envelope, some little pictures. So yeah, I just drifted through this journal, popping a few bits and pieces in a few locations. Nothing major. It's sort of, I don't know, I sort of felt very relaxed doing this journal. It was quite odd. I sort of wasn't as probably as wound up as the bag journals. So I probably enjoyed this one more. That was a bit of scrapbook paper that was left. On the other side of that is written lemon tree, which is the name of the paper pack. So I just tore that down. It was a, a square. And then the other part of that torn ripped uh, angle is a, another pocket in the journal further along. So lots of, um, um, journal cards and ephemera for someone to play with and heaps of spots where things can be attached. I'm hoping they'll see where I've attached a pocket and it swings and then, you know, go about creating their own flip outs. 
So there's the center and the second signature. There's the other torn piece off of that scrapbook paper, the other corner, little tuck. I also added in here um, this. It's just lots of words that um, have been typed out on some coffee dye, or, uh, Parisian dyed paper. Great for tearing up and using for collage. And there's actually one up here. So that's just a handy little element to tuck into a journal to give them something to play with. Some more um, paper that can be made into um, maybe another uh, journal. So a nice little tuck in there. Here's the internal pockets and I just popped in there some cardstock and some ephemera and some pre-made pockets that I didn't actually put down like this one for example. That one there, it's a little pocket ready to go so they can add that. That's a bit of Tim Holtz. Uh, cardstock that could be made into uh, folded in half or decorated up as a journal card. So just little random elements that potentially could be something for the owner of this journal. And the same in here, that's a, a scrap from the Edith Holding trim downs and I've just added some um, stitching and that could potentially be a pocket or made into a journal card. Okay, so nearly at the end of the second signature, a little envelope, and in there is some stamps and labels and things. Okay, coming up to the last signature, there's another one of the little dried flowers. Really happy with those. They come up really very pretty. Okay, a little wraparound postcard, a piece of ephemera, another pocket with some bits and pieces in it and a big tuck at the back lovely that's made out of an envelope and what else have we got some more ephemera just pictures lovely oh there's so much scope yet to go in this it's gonna be a lot of fun this journal okay so here's my bird napkin um, if you're wondering where I get my napkins from, Which Craft Do You Do is the website. It's got all sorts of supplies for, um, you know, journaling and scrapbooking or paper crafts and oh, a bit of everything now. It started off um, with just a few bits and pieces and I've just seen it grow and grow and grow. So that's just lovely. Now I'm going to get a little bird out of here. I'm thinking this little guy, unless we use the bottom here. Um, no, we'll use him. So the best way I find to get a bird out, I'm sure you all know this, is using a pen, paint pen that has water in it. And then I just, using that, just go around the outside of the bird that I want. And now that I've wet that napkin, like most napkins, once you start using them, they just disintegrate. So that just easily comes away from the main piece. And it gives you a nice ripped edge as well. Okay, so now it's just a case of gluing it into position. I like the straight edge on the side of the napkin, so I haven't actually taken that away. So now I'm just going to, with my eye, get a bit of a feel for where the edge of the napkin is. And I'm going to just apply glue. It's as simple as that. You don't need a lot of glue. You just need it to, you know, grip it and hold it into position. You can use PVA glue. You can use a paintbrush. You can apply your napkins a few different manners, but I find this the uh, most enjoyable. And I guess too, the reason I like it, if you're out and about working in your journal, say on holidays or something, the more things you can do with the one glue, admittedly it doesn't always work like that, the better I think. So it's just now a case of just whiz around the outside of that napkin zone and just make sure everything is glued down. 
Lovely. It's that simple. The glue dries clear, so it's not like it's a, a real issue. There we go. Okay. All right, so that'll dry. And we'll just have a little birdie coming in the top of the page. Okay, so I'll just have to be careful I don't glue everything together now that I've done that. So little flips, little collage, and then in the back some more French paper, an envelope, and a journal card. So on the very back, a second little element of um, sentiments that can be added to the journal and a nice big pocket for any photos or anything extra that they want to add to their journal there's plenty of space in there so that's it she is completed so really happy with my third journal in our edith holding series i think we're at episode 20 now unbelievable we've still got one journal to go and i have a, a new idea for that so i will just pop this aside out of the way so it can dry okay nice and safe and my remaining pages of Edith I still have heaps left so it wasn't as um, severe as I thought so there's a couple that have folded prepped ready to go some nice images yeah really happy with that and I still have half the book left so that's four journals out of that and I could probably easily get probably four maybe five out of the remainder so that's not a bad not a bad effort so there you go if you do decide to pull down your Edith holding and you just pick and choose a few elements you might find that you actually get a lot of value out of it which is um, what we're sort of looking for the dust cover I'm going to use to protect the remaining pages you could make that into something by all means, that'd be um, a great base to start a journal upon. But I'm going to save it for um, protecting my uh, remaining pages. Okay, let's have a play with the last one. Now, what I'm going to do with this one, got my calico, is I'm going to make this into a journal of stitchery book. So what it will be is um, pages within the tab, stitched into the tab, ready to have stitcheries attached, if that makes sense. So what we need to do is prepare some fabric into some page sizes that will be suitable and then um, stitch them in. So let's have a look at our fabric here and see what width we have, what the best way to do this. Got a selvage here, so I'm just going to snip, snip that. This might not be the easiest thing to show you on camera. If it gets a bit difficult, I might have to stop it, tear them all, and then come back. But we'll see how we go. So I've got a width here that is the same right through. Okay, so the first thing we might do is have a look at it folded in half and see where we are size wise is that the right size for a page in the journal it should be folded in half again that might be good because the the pages i'm going to put in are actually going to be a lot smaller than the pages that the needlework would be because the needlework sandwiches over this this is sort of like the the substrate the the um what's a good word for it i don't know there'd be a really tricky word but i'm just not thinking of it at the moment so yeah i think i can fold it in half and tear and then also tear it at the height we need which needs to be a little bit less than the actual 
journal. So I'm just going to cut it there and that'll be ripped. Then it's going to be ripped at the halfway point, which is over here, which will give me a, a piece that can be folded in half and that fold will be the signature stitching in point. So I'll just get some measurements just so you got a bit of a feel for what I'm doing here. The journal cover itself is nine and a half by seven and a half, yeah, seven and a half. So nine and a half high by seven and a half wide. So I've actually snipped this fabric at nine. So that'll bring it in below the top and the bottom of the page. And I'm snipping it at 12 and a half. So fold it in half, it will be a six and a quarter size page. Now our page is seven and a quarter, so it'll bring it in a little bit smaller. Does that make sense? So now I'm going to rip that that way, and then I'm going to rip this this way. So now I've got two pieces ready to go. Get rid of all my little threads. Now if I lay that one down and that one on top, that's it. Now fold them in half. That is the first signature that'll be stitched in. So a piece of um, needlework for example here's let's pretend that that's a piece of needlework I've completed it will attach here and because of the way we've formed our page that's the fold I'll be able to stitch it on and all of my stitching will be hidden here I then can go and do another piece of needlework and that will fold over to the top there and it will sit here so that'll be the second piece of needlework once again I can attach it my stitching will be held on and hidden in here then when these two pieces of needlework are secure all I'm going to do is close it up and stitch around the perimeter of my needlework and it's one page with two pretty pieces of embroidery on it and the same again add my piece stitch it on to the piece of calico and then the second one goes on the outside here and then once the two are done together it goes and that then is two pieces of embroidery secured onto my signature so each signature holds uh, four pieces of embroidery so I hope that makes sense so I'm thinking of putting in here three signatures so I'll just grab my calico again and we will, oops, pop it on here and we will tear down another two and that would be then a half and we might measure, I just snipped it, you can't see it on camera. So I'm just putting that there now again and I'm going to do another little snip up here. Okay, so now I can tear that. Complicated but not. Once you put your head around how it's going to be in the book, you can sort of work back from there. So now this strip is the right height, just needs to be Snipped again to break it down into two pieces that in eventually will make one signature. And like I said, I've made these pieces just a little bit smaller than the book itself so that the embroidery that attaches to it sort of hides, hides the calico inside. So let's just 
Now it's just a case of stitching it in. Okay. Oh, the threads, the threads. Threads everywhere. Okay. Number two. Now, what I might have to do is grab myself some needle and thread and come back with those supplies so that I can stitch them in. I also want to iron it. Just want to make sure that everything's nice and flat. And the other thing I'll do is I will iron a crease in. So that way I can see really easily where my creases are. There we go. Lovely. So those three will sit in there, just spaced out. There'll be probably space for more signatures, but it really comes down to how thick the embroideries are. So I think I'll just leave it at the three and then at another day, if another couple of embroidery is created and it's not too bulky, you could easily stitch in an additional. So what I'll do is I'll stop the video now. I will iron these. I will iron a crease into them. And then I'll come back with my tools, my needle and thread, and I'll stitch in the um, signatures. Thank you very much. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, everyone, I'm back and I've just got myself out of my cupboard a scrap of um, paper to create a bit of a template. Now, you could do all this by eye, which um, would be fine in this scenario because it's fabric, it moves. You're going to have a little bit of wriggle room to not be as straight as you probably would need to be in a normal journal. So you can just do it by eye, but I decided to cut a template just in case. Having said that, because it's fabric too, you can um, create a hole and it won't really matter because the, the fabric will, you can hide the hole if you have to unpick it. But for sake of um, doing it properly, I'm going to actually use a template. I have um, ironed them, creased them, and then I've put a pin in each one so that they don't wriggle around. So when I'm stitching in the signature, we've um, got everything nice and secure. So I'm just gonna use my template now to find the middle, middle lines. It should be halfway. And then I think I worked out that it's about seven and a bit. Yeah, so we might sort of want room for, you know, um, thickness of pages. So I'll just move that to four. It's not quite eight. So if I mark it at... not quite two centimeters sort of one and three quarters i think i'd be pretty happy with that you also want to leave room that if you want to slide in some extra signatures you can oops get that straight ish Yeah, I think that'll be be fine. I tend to embellish my um, work a lot. So I'm sort of wanting that space. But if you're just a few fabrics and the rest is embroidery, you'd have more than enough room to, um, you know, add some more signatures. Or at least you could put in... To those spaces maybe your collection of doilies that you have somewhere to stitch them in so i'm thinking i might put it at the three mark 
because I want the top of the page to be reasonably secure so that the signature is not sort of flapping around. So I'm going to, instead of the usual come down an inch, I'm going to come down just a little bit. And these books, they're handy just to have made up. So as you do embroidery, for those of you watching that do uh, slow stitch or embroidery, so have some journals made up ready to go. And let's say you see an idea somewhere on Pinterest or you, you purchase a, a book that inspires you to do an embroidery. Having journals made up like this, ready to go, I think, I don't know, I'd come to this journal and because of its colour scheme, my pieces that would go into this would be all of these tones. It sort of becomes like a set and it may not happen immediately. It um, will probably happen over, you know, time. So I think it's, um, yeah, a lovely, lovely thing to have in the cupboard, ready to go. And um, as you do a piece, you can just go to a journal or say you're considering doing a piece is probably a better word. You're considering doing a piece. Oh, that bandit, he gets so excited once he's had his breakfast and it's playtime. Oh, to be a pup. So yeah, let's say you see a bird somewhere and you think, oh, I'd like to embroider that. You then go to your journals and select one and um, yeah, stitch it in. Now, what I haven't done here is marked where I'm going through. I do know that that little stripe is dead center. So I'm going to now mark a dot where the needle needs to come through. Not the easiest to see, but I think we can, we can always grab the template to refer back to it. So I want my threads on the inside. That's good. Now they're going to upset all the neighbor's dogs. Oh, the frol, frolic, what's the word? Fr frolicking, frolic, oh, for goodness me. He's <laughs> He's a funny little pup. He's such a considered, considered dog. You know, you get those dogs that seem to just sit and watch everything going on, like the world passes by. He's that type of dog. Cute as anything. Pepper's more um, where we go and what we're doing, you know, now, now, now. Where Bandit's so much more chilled. He's a funny and it reminds me of my husband and Pepper is me. Where are we going? What are we doing? Let's do this. Over here. There's a squirrel. You know? <laughs> Just as funny. He has such personalities in animals. So I don't care if they're a cow, a bird or a dog. I, if you watch enough, you will see a personality appear. It's just, just beautiful. There they go. They're running through. So now I'm coming back up through the signature, catching that little dot. Now the trick is to create a bit of a hole in the fabric so that you can get back through without piercing the thread that came through. And the best way to test it is just give it a little tug right now. And if it moves freely, you're good to go because if you pierce it it's going to make it oh actually i'm in the wrong spot aren't i oh no i can go down there and come back up no i'm going to undo that i prefer to go through to the top hole goodness me go through to the top hole and um come back up through that hole just holds the signature a little stronger into position. Oh, I feel like I'm struggling for words today. I feel real, what's the word, dopey today? 
just uh, like I slept well. I just feel not lethargic, just not sharp. I shouldn't be handling a needle probably. <laughs> okay, so now we're through to the back. Yep. So I can pull, pull that one through. And now I've just got to find the hole to come back but without piercing the thread the degree of difficulty is high I really should have I'm going to change my needle this is a sharp needle I'm going to change it to the blunt just to be sure that I don't pierce that thread I should have done that in the beginning see what I mean by dopey not switched on I just feel There it is. Yeah, just feel a little, not flat, like I was dying to get in here this morning, just not sharp. Maybe I'm a little bit low on calories. And I don't have that energy pumping through me. Might be time for some breakfast. Okay, so now I'm confident I can come back through there and yeah i haven't haven't pierced yeah that's good really good it is fiddly it's not like paper journal stitching in signatures where you can sort of bend it all and paper clip it and you know everything is nice and secure so now you've got to get get it nice and tight but not too tight because you're dealing with paper and uh, fabric sorry you don't want it pulling so if anything it needs to be nearly a little bit little bit looser but the good thing is you can adjust it you can add more signatures there we go i'll just tie that off Fabric's very forgiving. Okay, don't leave the pins in there for now because that's less flip-flopping around. And there's the middle signature in. So now let's put in the next one. And it looks like it, if I went right down the center of that check there, the beautiful thing about checks I went right down there, not that I can see real well due to the colours. <sighs> Just redoing my dots. this top one that's a bit tricky to see all right so let's get some more crochet cotton I haven't used the wax thread this time because I'm a bit concerned that the wax may stain the fabric especially in a warm climate like Queensland I'm a bit wary of the wax on the um, on the fabric Let's get that centered nicely. My pages aren't the exact exact size, all of them, but it doesn't really matter because it's the internal of the book. You won't see this. And technically, if you wanted to reduce bulk, Rhonda from um, oh I'm not sure what Rhonda's channel's called Rhonda Winston, she had a, a brilliant idea that this fabric you'd actually tear it down to even just that, so that got rid of all of this excess bulk that would really you know help the situation as well. So I'm 
just popping that through there. And the other needle was better to pierce fabrics with, I might just say, but this one's fine. Okay, so now we're going to come up the bottom and because we've done one already, it's going to make it a little easier to find our, our mark. Oops. That's pretty good. You can see my theory for using a check fabric in there. I know it's tricky to work with checks because it's got to be, you know, they've got to be straight, but it is worth it when it comes to stitching in signatures because you've already got a grid system ready to go. Okay, so that's back up. Now we're going to go, whoops, two pieces of fabric need to be together. Now back down, pull it through, so now we've got to find our way home again, which shouldn't be too hard with this blunt needle. So if this was three tabs, not just one big piece, the same principle applies, except you're doing your um, stitching in on each tab. So each little tab would have this exact stitch. And that's the only difference to doing a tab spine, is you've just got to do it more often in two or three different locations depending on you know how many tabs you use to hold your journal together so that feels nice and firm and I'll just tie a little bow completely adjustable if needed not off those ends they can all be trimmed but I'll leave them on there in case I, I want to undo the signature and add something else in there. There might be a doily or something that I decide that I want woven in amongst the signatures at a later date. But it gives me at least freedom to do that. Yeah, that looks good. And now our last one. So we need some more of the cotton. To mark some lines. So it's nearly to the stripe edge of that stripe. So if I went there and there, oh, I've got to love these stripes. I probably didn't even need a template to be honest. Okay. That's all good. Hmm. This one tore a little bit bigger. I don't think I'm actually going to use it, to be honest, because it's just, I don't know. See how that's, it's like that much too big. I don't know how I got that so wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rip that guy down a bit. way out. How did that happen? When I was ironing it, I thought it looked a bit 
a little bit out. Easily fixed. Nothing like getting the trimmer out and just giving your fabric a quick little trim. There we go. Problem solved. Get rid of those threads. Yeah, that's better. Hmm. Who knows? Who knows how that happened? So let's have a little look at where the dots need to go for this. pretty good and as you can see it's not you know measured within an, a mill it's just a guide this fabric's very forgiving and these are going to be hidden within embroidery so you know it's not not really a an accurate science <clears throat> so now we can come through the middle I think ironing the fold is probably the best tip I can give you we crease and have our um, papers all prepared like this. So why not get a crease or a fold line in our fabrics? Okay, so we're now finding our, our hole at the bottom. on camera so I'll just come back up there and in there lovely okay as I said I plan to sell these journals I'm not a hundred percent sure on this one I'll make a decision closer to the date um, I've sort of really liked this one. I'm feeling a little attached to it, but what I plan to do is I'm going to make a couple more in the coming week. And um, they'll be listed for sale as well. So whether there's one that takes my fancy a little more than this one, possibly. What am I doing? I shouldn't have turned that over. I'm really getting myself into a mess now. So coming up through the center one step at a time so yeah I'll I will make a couple more so for those watching that are embroiderers and not journal makers this is a, a journal for you which can have some of your work put into it there'll be a few different color combinations I think I don't think they'll be like this one so to speak but I, I don't know I've got three I think or four books that I think will be beautiful they're a little bit bigger than this just to give you a little bit more space for um, a larger embroidery but um, we'll see I haven't got that far yet I do have William Morris on the on the mind as well as my next series when I get that started I'm just not sure um, getting a little busy at work so I have to be mindful of my day job. But having said that, I don't think stopping me getting into my crafting room is going to happen. <laughs> I will sneak in here. Even if it um, this series in particular I pre-recorded because I knew I had a few chores to do at the end of August. And um, a little bit of work. So I thought oh, I'll just get them all pre-recorded and I'm up to episode 20. So I'm guessing you're seeing this ne nearing to the end of August. So September 1 is when I'm going to put some journals up for sale. I've been through my stash and I've peeled out a few extras. A couple of them went back to the stash. It was hilarious. I, I grabbed myself a, a coffee and I went to my cupboard and I'm like, right, who's going on the market and I pulled out probably 10 and then I think I put four back I'm like no not ready to let that one go or that one and then I walked out of the room and I was like you don't even journal they're just sitting there let them go to a home so I come back and I put two back out 
And then I put another one back, a different one. Oh, it was just crazy. Just silly. So I hope by September I've made a decision. Once I photograph them and get them listed in the Etsy store, well, I'm committed, aren't I? It's all over. That's it. So I'm sure that'll happen in the next week or so. There we go. There is my journal for stitchery created with some pages in there, three signatures ready to have a heap of pieces. So like I said before, each, each piece has um, the opportunity to have four embroideries. So with three signatures, that's a lot of embroidery. And of course, there's a pocket here for another piece to slide in. If you don't like the pocket, pop a piece straight over it. So, you know, there's heaps of opportunities. In a journal of stitchery that I've got, I put a piece of calico here that folded out like a flip and then folded back in with a ribbon. So you undo the ribbon, you open it up, and there was an embroidery in there. Um, so there's heaps of, you know, opportunities to make a journal easily for all of your embroidery and that has a nice soft spine that it can expand yeah love it let's just get a side view there you can see the signatures stitched in ready to go so yeah and you could even embellish this more and put more lace and oh you can do so much with these things so i might just now pop a little knot on the end of that seam binding. Um, which craft do you do um, sell seam binding? The one that I was buying for, she doesn't seem to have much of a range at the moment because I really needed some neutrals. And then um, I went and checked out for some other reason, which craft do you do? And um, she has fantastic range of seam binding and it was for the same price I was buying previously. So there's certainly seam binding out there. Okay, so that's the next journal completed. That's it. Let me just clear the deck here. So we have our journal of stitchery. We have our little bird is dry. Yep, so there's the, the second one. Lovely. Thank you, Edith. You really offered up some beautiful pieces. I'm really happy with them. And here's the two that we did that were made out of the paper bag. So that's my series on Edith Holden. A little bit of everything, very different, a lot of fun. And that Edith Holden book has still got so much more to give. Even though this one doesn't have Edith Holden in it, there'd be no reason why you couldn't make a little journal and slide it inside the pocket using the papers to document the activities within the actual journal itself. Okay, everyone, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this series. I hope you picked up a few tips and hints and I guess things not to do. I love those. I was so disappointed when I'd made that the first time and it just uh, just wasn't happy. That was the only one that come good and it it's all dried and there's hardly any glue showing where the others, they were just a, just a mess, but we managed to save them and um add them to the journal anyway okay everyone i will leave you now and i will see you all in the next video bye for now